guys welcome back to my channel so I am literally have just turned the camera off and turned it back on again to film this video but I'm going to be doing a science video for you guys today so pretty much everybody who does GCSE either does triple or double science and it's the subject that a lot of people struggle with the most I personally feel like science is one of my easier like one of my easier GCSEs um, just because I have a brain that very much likes um, exam schemes that are very repetitive um, I could just learn the answers pretty much for AQA obviously I understand that it's getting harder now with the new GCSEs um, you have to learn your formulas and things and I'm going to give you some tips to do that today um, but I'm just going to give you what I did to revise for science um, I got A stars in all three of my sciences if that is any use to you I don't know if that makes you feel like these will work but I am just telling you exactly what I did and that got me A stars so clearly I must have been doing something right. As I said in my history video, if you watch that, I very much learn by watching YouTube videos. Of course, you can't learn all of your information from YouTube videos, but once you've revised a topic a certain amount of times, there's only so many times you can read it in a revision guide before you just stop learning it. So there's a different way of learning perhaps new aspects about that topic. So I used to watch YouTube videos for science, especially religiously, and I had three sources, no, four sources of YouTube information that I would like to share with you. So my main source of YouTube information to understand topics was my GCSE science. This, this thing is just a lifesaver. I know it isn't free, but it's definitely worth the money or if you can ask a friend who's already bought it, it's really useful to understand topics. So for example, evolution, you can sit and watch that video, whether it be just watching it to get an understanding, watching whilst having your revision guide or your notes in front of you, writing notes from what you're watching, watching it a couple of times and trying to write down what you remember. There are many ways you can engage with these videos, but they're so useful to get the first grasp of the topic coming. Like, they are quite lengthy and sometimes you don't want to sit and watch that. They're not ones that you will sit and watch and be like, right, I've revised the whole topic now because it's good for forming the base understanding but they're quite long to watch as a form of revision. They're quite good for a form of recapping information perhaps you did in year 10 or if you don't understand something they're quite good because he explains and they also come with past paper questions and worksheets. So every time I watched the video I would do the past paper questions and the worksheets underneath. It was so helpful and I cannot recommend him enough for all three sciences. Second source of information I used for sort of understanding and the theory behind my science was definitely Primrose Kitten. I've done two collab videos with her on my channel because I just absolutely love her channel and I still watch it even though I don't do GCSE science because Jen is just such a lovely lady and I love hearing all about her life and everything that she's getting up to but I'm not saying this because I th consider us as YouTube friends, I'm saying this because her videos were so helpful for me, um, especially for chemistry. She has summary videos for each topic, so she has the whole of C1 in like an hour and all of these things and I used to sit and watch these when I'd revised everything and I wanted to kind of do some like, not passive learning, but I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that I'd missed. And they were also really good for physics because she explained concepts and also went through the mark schemes which is so important if you're doing science, especially with AQA because they just repeat the same thing over and over and over again. So you need to need to get familiar with the mark schemes and she is the best person to do that because she will tell you exactly where you're going to be hitting those marks. And any tricky concept, any revision tips you need are all on that channel. There is so much on that channel and I owe a lot of my chemistry and physics GCSEs to Jen. So thank you Jen if you're watching. I have two other channels that I used when it was getting closer to exams. They were a lot more compact so these are definitely, definitely for rehashing your knowledge. Like learning, not learning it but just making sure that you've got the concepts in your brain ready to go for the exam. So the one that I used in about two months running up to the exam was Christopher Thornton. His videos are amazing, they're so useful. It does say get that C in your GCSE but most of his videos are tailored at higher tier students as well so you definitely definitely need to watch these especially if you're a visual learner there are a lot of diagrams a lot of moving things it's very visual you interact and when you're in the exam you can kind of picture those things in your head and it kind of helps them come back really easily he has a very easy to understand voice and he's also made revision guides and everything like that his entire channel is just so so useful and 
I honestly, especially for biology, found his videos really, really interesting and really useful. And just him as a person, it was very easy to engage and learn from Chris. Um, so Chris if you're watching <laughs> thanks <laughs> the final one was free science lessons I found him so late in my GCSEs it must have been about two weeks before my biology GCSE every single night before one of my science GCSEs I sat and watched his whole topic video on he has like two minute videos that covered all the topics and I just sat and watched those these are very short very quick videos but very very easily explaining like they just go back to the basics go back to what you need to know to pass the exam and they're so so useful for when perhaps you don't have that much time to revise or if you are revising you're just not in a place where you can actively be learning new things if you just want to go over things that you've done many times by the time I got to my science GCSEs, I had gone over everything so much. I was literally near enough ready to jump out the window. So I was getting so bored of reading through my revision guide. So he was really useful that I could just whiz through. Yep, yeah, know that, know that, know that, know that, know that. And definitely very, very useful. So there are many different types of YouTube videos. Of course, you're going to want to go for the more longer conceptual ones, perhaps like Jen's and My GC Science to start with. And then as you get closer to the exam, as you've done more past papers, all of this sort of thing, then go on to the summary ones. Don't just sit and watch all of the summary videos and think that that's going to get you an A star because it's not at the end of the day. <laughs> so now I'm going to go on to the CGP revision guides. These are for science indispensable i actually don't think at any point during the revision process touched my actual class notes for science like ever i don't even know why i made them i literally learned this revision guide this was my lifeline this with bbc bite size i swear to god that's like all i did to revise science i'm so lazy i used to set aside a certain hour for like 1a 1b 2a 2b and i would just go through it and i what i would do is i would read through the page first obviously and then i would go to the bottom and sometimes there are questions at the bottom or questions at the back of the section and i would answer those questions then i would go on to bbc bite size and watch the associated video activity because i found those so useful like i did for history and then I would answer the quiz questions on BBC Bite Size and then I would go online and find past papers. So for example, there's a whole section in chemistry on limestone. So I would revise the limestone section, maybe watch some of the YouTube videos, maybe do a bit of BBC Bite Size. I would always keep one session for one subtopic. I would never try and do like more than two in one session. Um, and mix up, mix and match. So do a bit of YouTube, do a bit of CGP, do a bit of Bite Size, do some past paper questions. Like, you know just engage with the science you sit in there reading it out the guide and thinking that that's going to be fine yes it will be fine nearer the exam when you're just trying to refresh your memory but when you're trying to learn the topic in the first place you need to be engaging with that content or else that in content is not going to engage with you so definitely definitely use the cgp revision guides because they have what you need to know for gcse at a level you can't use those as just as a regard they'll get you like a c at gcse Honestly, that was my main source of revision and I got an A star. So you don't need to use your class notes as that has got what you need in it. And my final thing that I want to say for science in general, past paper questions, please. There are past papers going back to 2001. I know that the papers are completely different. Just do them anyway because the spec has barely changed. Just do every single past paper and when i say that i did everything i did every single past paper i genuinely had a folder ask any of my friends it was this big and it broke because i had so many past papers in there but by the end i was getting 58 59 out of 60 consistently and i will tell you why that is that is because aqa copy the same questions year after year after year does not matter how well you know the menstrual cycle if you cannot apply it to the aqa's mark scheme you are not going to pick up those marks you if, if you go through each past paper do it look at the bits you've got wrong and learn the mark scheme for certain answers you will get an a star fully you need to understand the concepts right but when it gets to like may time you're not going to like need to revise any more the concepts because you'll already know them what you need to be doing is applying them to past papers 
biology for example every single year pretty much there's a five marker on evolution or natural selection and I can still tell you what the five points are to get those five marks you know like if it was the geographical barrier one there's a geographical barrier which instills isolation the two populations on each side natural selection occurs random alleles and genes flying about everywhere things develop, they develop until they can no longer interbreed and they're the same, not the same species. Like, I know that and I don't even study biology. That's because I did all of the past papers and when I got into the exam, apart from B1, which threw me completely, all of my other ones were pretty much a rehash of all of the questions that I'd already done and I got full UMS in every single one of my science exams apart from B1, which I got 98 out of 100 UMS on, but that was just, that was just a weird paper. That was just really weird. Ask anybody in the country what an independent company is and they will start crying. That is pretty much it for science. Past papers I would say are the key for science. Obviously you need to know the concepts first, but past papers are where you're going to pick up those marks like mad woman. Definitely go and use all of those YouTube channels for science. There are so many science resources online. Take advantage of them please and if you don't understand something ask your teacher. So I'm pretty sure that's it. As I said in my history video, apply this to your specification. Don't use the AQA if you don't do AQA. I don't know if Edexcel will rehash questions. But I hope this was of some use. Please comment down below any questions you have and we can help each other out because I'm pretty sure most people here will have done or are doing science. And yeah, I will see you next week with a new video. Bye. Mwah.